Hello and thank you for coming to check out this video. This video is going to be a continuation of my CCMP CCIE collaboration lab guide. Um, it's been a while since I put one out there, but I've, I've been really wanting to get this one done for quite a while and I'm pretty excited about it. It's going to hit a couple different topics on a couple different exams. So if we go on down here, we should see it in collaboration applications. We have Unity Connection here, and it talks about Mailbox. Now, they specifically talk about Unity Connection with the SIP integrations. They don't talk about Unity Connection with the Skinny integrations, at least not here on the Collab Core. Now, we also have, I think somewhere, some SIP trunking. I know on the call, uh, Advanced Call Control and Mobility, SIP trunking is an exam topic, so technically we're going to be touching on some of that exam as well. Um, here for Clicka, we will have Unity Connection right here, and we have some MWI stuff in here. I don't, I don't see anything where they talk about Skinny or SIP integration, but then the CCIE as well is going to talk about Unity Connection. Now I know in the past the blueprint had unity connection not only for sip but also for um skinny now now they don't say here they just say cisco unity connection voicemail integration so while i will cover the skinny integration i won't talk about it as much as i will talk about the sip integration but with that said, let's actually go ahead and start talking a little bit more about it. I've, I've got some diagrams here I want to talk about. In the videos that I'll be doing, the headquarters CUCM, well, actually, first off, I'm only using the headquarters Unity Connection. So Unity Connection can be integrated with more than one CUCM cluster. I'm going to integrate headquarters Unity Connection with the headquarters CUCM and the site B CUCM. Headquarters CUCM will be integrated using SIP, where the skinny integration will be used for Site B. Now, both clusters are going to use the same number for their voicemail pilots. That doesn't really matter, but just so that there's not confusion later, they are two different unique numbers on two different unique CUCM clusters. They just happen to serve the same purpose and route to the same application, which is Unity Connection. But they, in no way, neither one of them know about each other, right? So let's go ahead and since we're gonna focus mostly on headquarters CUCM, that's the SIP integration, let's talk about what the call flow is gonna look like there. 2000, which is a SIP phone, is going to call 1000, which is also a SIP phone. And they are both registered to the headquarters CUCM. 1000 is not going to answer the call. And what that will do is it'll cause the ring no answer timer to, to, uh, to time out. And then CUCM needs to look at the uh, configuration to determine what, what needs to be done when that phone does not answer. And the configuration is going to say, route it over to voicemail. Well, CUCM is then going to have to look at the configuration on the extension and say, what is your voicemail profile? Once it has the voicemail profile, it's going to see that that has a voicemail pilot associated with it. With it. That voicemail pilot is going to have a number 4000. Now CUCM needs to go to digit analysis and look up number 4000 and just do, you know, call processing for it. It's going to find out that 4000 points to a SIP trunk for Unity Connection. So now CUCM is going to start talking with Unity Connection and that's going to be the uh, SIP trunk over there. So we still have 2000 in the picture, but 1000 is, is basically gone out of the picture. CUCM is going to engage headquarters Unity Connection with a SIP invite, but there's something special about that SIP invite that, that really just needs to be there and that's going to be the diversion header. Now, remember, we, we had 2000 calling 1000, 1000 didn't answer, 1000 diverted the call 
to Unity Connection. That is that diversion header is how Unity Connection is going to know who was called originally, who sent the call to Unity Connection. So that diversion header says 1000 Unity Connection then is going to look and say, do I have any users with a voicemail box, any users associated with 1000 and do they have a voicemail box? Here's what the call flow will actually look like. 2000 is going to be sending an invite over to headquarters to UCM and that's going to have a, you know, a two field, which will show 1000. CUCM is going to say, all right, I'm going to try, hold on a minute. They find the phone that has the number 1000, send over a, uh, an invite there. That phone's going to send back a 100 trying followed by a 180 ringing. And then CUCM is going to tell phone at 2000, hey, go ahead and start playing that the fact that uh, 1000 is ringing, right? So that the calling party can hear that ringing tone and know that the call is proceeding and progressing properly. Now, after some time, the ring no answer timer is going to fire off, like we said before. And then CUCM is going to look up the logic, the configuration to see um, what happens when that timer is hit. And what we have configured is the whole voicemail profile, forwarding it to voicemail 4000, that's going to hit the SIP trunk, whatever. CUCM is going to send a cancel over to the phone with 1000, but it's going to send an update over to the phone at 2000, letting them know that the call is being forwarded to voicemail. So they're going to say, okay, to that update, CUCM is going to send that invite over to Unity Connection. Remember the diversion header, which is very important. And then we have a 100 trying coming back from Unity Connection, 180 ringing coming back from Unity Connection. Finally, Unity Connection answers the call with a 200 OK. And in there, we'd have the SDP and all of that. CUCM is going to send the 200 OK back to the phone, and it's going to send an ACK over to Unity Connection. The phone is going to send an ACK back to CUCM, the phone at 2000, and we're going to have the RTP set up from the phone at 2000 over to Unity Connection, allowing them to leave a voicemail for the user at extension 1000. Now, eventually they're going to hang up, right? They're going to be done sending their message. That buy is then going to be sent over to Unity Connection. 200 OKs will be sent and then the call will be over. Now, once that call is over, we're not completely done just yet because the phone still needs to know whether or not it should turn on the message waiting indicator light to tell the users that they have a new voicemail. Right, so, so the message waiting indicator light again is called the MWI. And for SIP, the way that it works is Unity Connection is going to send an unsolicited notify over to the headquarters to UCM. The reason why it's an unsolicited notify is because the call already ended. There's just a notify coming out of nowhere. Now, we'll show it in the videos later when we set it up. But on the CUCM side, you actually need to go and uh, do a configuration that allows this unsolicited notify. And then CUCM will send a 200 OK for that notify over to um, Unity Connection. That, that notify message that came in will um, have a, a header. It will actually have a message and it says message waiting. And it'll either say yes or no. And then the CUCM is actually going to update its database to reflect whether or not the MWI should be on or off. And then after the database update is done, it, the CUCM will send a notify over to the phone, letting the phone know you have a new voicemail and you should turn your light on. It'll also have the message waiting yes or no. The phone will then send back the 200 OK for that notify. Now, something else I want to point out. Because updating the database is part of changing the MWI to be on or off, it's important to note that um, when you have database replication issues on CUCM, um, the MWI light isn't going to update correctly. So you may have some people calling in saying, hey, 
I checked all my voicemails. I don't have any new voicemails. I listened to them all. But the red light won't turn off. Or you might have other users saying, I'm getting new voicemails and the red light won't turn on. The lights, the MWI just stays off. And that's because if you have database replication issues, the database isn't going to be able to be updated and therefore the CUCM won't reach out and tell the phone, um, hey, you, you need to adjust your MWI. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble now, so I'll just end the video out here. Uh, I hope that the, uh, the coming videos are going to be interesting to you. I hope you get some value out of it. I hope it, passes, it helps you pass an exam or helps you better understand um, some sort of configuration or some sort of concept that you are having a hard time with. And um, I'll see you in the next video.